Hey there, Rodrigo here for Textualize and in this short video I want to show you that you can use any type of CSS selector with a query one method when you're doing textual queries. So what I have here is an application that has a label and an input and when the input is submitted I update the text of the label and the way I'm getting to the label is, a, is with a query one. And the query one only works if there is one and only one widget that matches the query. So if I had, for example, in my app, if I had two labels and this one said type something colon, and then I have the input and this is the label I want to update, this right now would fail because the query one would raise an exception. If I run my application, if I type something, and if I press enter, I get an exception. So what I could do is, I could do a couple of different things, but one that's uh, sensible and that I want to show you now is I could add for example an ID to this label and this will be I'm going to call it to be updated and in here in my query what I can do is I can add this selector so I can look for things with an ID because this is a valid CSS selector so this is going to work just fine so if I rerun my application if I press enter the correct label gets updated. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. So the correct label is getting the update. Now, at this point, my IDE no longer knows if this is a label. Notice that this is colored white and previously it was colored yellow, I think. So if I do self.query1, but update text value, exactly. Text value. So this and this, they have slightly different colors, maybe you can't see. But if I hover, you can see that this recognizes the method update of the label, and this doesn't, it just says function any. And that's because in here, typing is clever enough to understand that the result of querying for a label is going to be a label, but it doesn't know what's going to be the result of this to be updated. And so what you can do is, when you're querying with a non type selector, so if you type in a string, what you can do is use the second argument and say that the result should be a label. And now typing knows that this update method is the method of the label. So what this video, what I wanted to show you in this video is you can use various different selectors here and when you do you might want to use the second uh, argument that specifies the type that you expect the widget to be of. And if this doesn't match, it's going to raise an error. So if I say that this, for example, is supposed to be an input, and if I run my app, and if I type something and press enter, it's going to raise an error, because the type didn't match. So I want this to be a label, and just one last example. Uh, let's see, this could be... The selectors here, they can be really any CSS selector. They can even be compound selectors. So I can do something like the label that's the immediate child of a screen that has the ID to be updated. So this is going to work just fine. So let me type something, if I press enter, there you have it. So that's all for this video, I hope this was helpful, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!